everybody. This video is going to capture the last section of our voting behaviour study theme. So we've done social class and we've done age. Hopefully you've managed to wrap your head around all that information. The final section we're going to look at is media, so the impact of media on voting. What I will say he here is it's really important you understand this section is looking at the influence of media on our votes. The reason I say that is our next study theme is looking at participation and how the media can have an influence on that. So just be aware, this is particularly related to voting and voting behaviour. Here are just a reminder of the different types of questions that come up. You might get a 20 marker on this, so I would be making sure you've got four key points. So the media influences, yes, because this. It also influences voters because of this. However, the media doesn't really influence as evidenced here and it doesn't really play a part because of this. So you need kind of four good points to have. Again, you should know social class and age a little bit by now. We're going to work on media this week and then hopefully you'll be able to understand the impact of all of these as well. So some of what you'll see if you did national with me last year, you will see some of these slides coming back because they are still relevant and they're still correct. Some of you will completely have forgotten and gone, oh, I've never seen that before. You have. And some of you obviously didn't do national. So we'll cover everything you need. One of the questions, people know, people who know who they're voting for already, does the media help or does it hinder? So if you know, I'm voting SNP, I voted SNP once, I'm always voting SNP. Are you going to pay attention to the media? Are you actually going to pay attention to what the newspapers, the TV, the radio, social media, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, whatever it is, are you going to pay attention to that? Or are you just going to be a critical voice and say, you're wrong, nah, that's all wrong, all lies, because I know my party is correct. Floating voters, those who have not yet made up their minds, how is media influencing them? Are they consciously looking for it? So do you have a voter who goes, do you know what? I'm really not sure who I'm going to vote for. I'm going to do a bit of research online or I'm going to watch the TV debates, which I'll come to in a, a few moments. Or are they just having it done to them? So if you think at the amount of times that you scroll through social media, is it that they're seeing political posts without even realising it and that's influencing them? If people are disengaged, will they care? They already know how to vote. Are they really bothered? If they don't care about to vote, they're not going to vote, are they? However, it can be really useful. We've got to be careful. Now, there is a difference between saying everything is rubbish, it's all conspiracy theories, and going, well, actually, that's not got the full information, or that's just using really clever wording to try and word a bad issue. So it's really important that we develop those thinking skills. And we also know that parties will do anything to get the media on their side. They want the media to be their ally, not their enemy. It is not worth their time having an enemy in the newspapers because it makes their job hell. What we're going to kind of look at are the two kind of sections in media, traditional and new media. Your traditional is your newspaper, your campaigning and your TV, including TV debates. Whereas your new media is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Internet, Snapchat. There's probably a new one been invented by now, by the time you watch this, because you'll be bored of TikTok and bottle flipping. I, I can't keep up, all right? I used to be good at it. My age is getting to me. So what do we need to know about newspapers? Nice and easy. Newspapers can be biased. That means they are allowed to hold an opinion and report that opinion. The Sun newspaper famously um, said in 1997 that was the Sun what won it. The Sun claimed it was their direct influence that got Tony Blair elected. What I will say here is that is a very old example, so I probably wouldn't be using it in an exam, but it, help, it helps to illustrate the point. The Sun, however, gave up on Labour in 2009 and went back to the Conservative Party, who they used to support, and they now support Boris Johnson very much so. They're allowed to print in their paper, look at how amazing our party is and look at how terrible the opposition are. They can do that, nothing's stopping them. Often the papers will choose a party and stick with it. The Sun is an exception. I wouldn't recommend you read The Sun at the best of times. Um, not the most accurate paper, shall we say. Um, however, they do switch a little bit. They will praise their own parties. What's interesting though, is even between them, they can't decide what to say. What you've got 
in front of you is real front covers. And these were talking about election verdicts. Um, the Sun, so the English version of the Sun or the UK wide version of the Sun supports the Conservative Party. Okay, look, 2015 election verdict. The one on the right, however, is the Scottish Sun, so only available in Scotland and it actively supports the SNP. Now, they're total opposite. It's not as if the Sun in England is supporting Labour and the Scottish Sun is supporting SNP. They are totally opposite parties that they support, yet they can't even decide. However, look at the language used. It's a Tory. Um, the photo there, for anyone that doesn't recognise it, um, is a Photoshop version of Kate Middleton when um, the Duchess of Cambridge, when she came out of hospital after having one of her babies. Um, I think it was George, the first baby, by the blue outfit. But given there'd been the baby fever, the royal baby fever, they were playing on that. They were making it a great thing, like a celebration. It's a Tory. On the right-hand side, Star Wars, A New Hope, this was when all the new Star Wars films were coming out and they're basically saying, look, she's like Princess Leia, she's going to save us, she's going to do all this wonderful thing. So they will very much play up their own parties. However, what is very interesting, and this is very recent, um, back in May, two newspapers which could not be more opposite both agreed that Dominic Cummings, the guy, um, I was away to use the hashtag there that appeared, I will not because it's prop, just don't, don't. Um, the Guardian and the Daily Mail both agreed he had to go. He was the government advisor, or probably still is, who knows, um, by the time you watch this video. But he was a government advisor that said he had to drive 30 miles to test his eyesight and go to the castle and all that. This is unheard of. Normally, the Daily Mail will go out of their way to defend the Conservative Party. And I mean, properly go out of their way to find a reason to make it sound good. The Guardian is very much a left-wing paper, Labour Party, SNP maybe, but more so Labour. What you've got on the right is a screenshot from Piers Morgan, no, and he's noting there. Now, whether you love or loathe him, he is a journalist with years and years of experience, and he's saying he can't remember anyone surviving a scandal where two polar opposite newspapers tell them to go. TV. TV is not allowed to be biased. For those of you at home, you might know that you've got a TV license to pay. Um, the BBC, for example, is publicly funded. Therefore, legally, it has to be impartial. If you believe it's not completely impartial, you can actually raise a case against it. All TV channels have to be impartial, however. So STV, Channel 4, Channel 5, BBC2, all the other ones. They have to allow fair representation. So if you're watching Good Morning Britain or Newsnight or... Uh, Peston, anything like that, and you see a Labour candidate on there, they have to have either managed to get someone in an opposing party, so it would be Conservative or UKIP normally, or have at least tried every possible attempt to get another party on because they have to be fair. Peston, Robert Peston, the political journalist, would not be allowed to just invite Labour people on and give them a platform to speak good things. Same with any other party. They've got to offer it out equally. What you'll sometimes see on the TV, you won't see them at the moment because we don't have an election on, but come the Scottish elections next year, you'll quite often see in like the STV and Channel 4, it'll kind of stop and go to advert, but you'll hear a voice going, this is a party political broadcast brought to you by the blah, party. They have to do that because they have to announce that this is not our views, this is a party political broadcast, this is an advert for a political party. We are not saying it is good, we are just saying it is here for you to watch because they've got to remain impartial. So how much does the media influence us? Well, back in 2011, circulation of daily newspapers in the UK was about 14 million. However, that dropped by 4 million within five years. Less and less people are reading newspapers every day. They're just not a thing. News has moved online. If we look at statistics, particularly young people, very rarely access news at all. And when they do, it's going to be online. According to a 2015 survey of over 3,000 people, 62% of the population saw TV as being the most influential. So you could say actually newspapers are defunct, TV is the way forward. Um, you've also got their newspapers had 24% influence informing readers about the election in previous elections. That's a quarter of people. Now, you can't argue that that's wrong and media doesn't influence because that's a quarter of voters in theory were influenced by some kind of media. 
Those who did national last year might recognize this. I definitely used it because I know because I picked it up from the slides I made. And what this is just showing us is some facts from Ofcom. Ofcom are the English kind of regulator for TV. And it's kind of talking about how influential is TV or where do they get their information? I'm not going to read all of those out. You have access to this PowerPoint. You can pause that video. These would be brilliant facts for essays. You don't need every single one. Think, is there a fact there that proves the point that yes, media influences voting? Is there a fact there that would back up the point of no, media does not influence voting? Think about it. Again, just what you see here on the screen is what is the most popular way for people to get information? If we look at political news, which is this one here, which has the 40% in purple, um, you'll find that 40% of people feel they get political news through the TV, 10% from social media, 12% from other internet. And, you know, almost a quarter of people aren't interested in political news at all. So that's just really interesting because it'll show you where people get their information. Now, again, this is from what I did with Nationals last year. You do not have to complete this, but I think those who used it last year found it really useful to just help them sort out, does it influence or does it not? Again, you can use these facts if you want because at higher, it asks you to comment on Scotland or the UK or both. So you can use any of the facts there. They can all be sorted either into either it does influence voters or it does not influence voters. So think, does dropping newspapers, does that suggest people are bothered? Does media influence them? No, because they're not using newspapers. However, does a, a TV channel or a party political broadcast with lots of people watching it influence? Well, yeah, probably because it's lots of information there. Now, coming on to the kind of newer kinds of news and newer kinds of media, one of the things that's been really, really prevalent in the previous few elections is fake news. You'll have heard this term all the time. Donald Trump likes to fake news. That's fake news. Does it come from China? Really bad impression, but you get the idea. Back in 2019, the Conservative Party headquarters during the live TV debates actually changed their Twitter handle. Now, that maybe doesn't sound like a significant thing, but if you look at the screenshot on the right-hand side, that means when that account is tweeting during the live debates, it's coming up on people's timelines saying that it is Fact Check UK. Now, does the name Fact Check UK make you sound like it's a fact checking site? Yes. If you're glancing at that on your phone, are you going to probably think that's accurate? Yes, if you're glancing. The fact that it has here from, um, so this is just the Conservative HQ, so from there, and their at is still the same, but their name's different. That was really misleading because lots of people will look at that on Twitter and not look at that bit. They won't know that means Conservative uh, HQ. So they got into a lot of trouble for that because they were trying to spin the media. They were trying to make it work for them. We also know that anyone can post on the internet. For all you know, I've been in and changed the Wikipedia uh, article related to this topic already. Have I? Have I not? You'll never know. Um, or you will, but don't ruin the fun. How do we know what a reliable site is now? It's getting much harder to know what reliable information is. Um, there's a link coming up to a little BBC WhatsApp video, and it's really interesting because it's basically saying that a WhatsApp message or even a on Facebook Messenger message can spread viral in minutes that is totally inaccurate, yet people believe it and they're sharing, sharing, sharing. So it's really important that we kind of think about where we get our information. Also keep in mind your education of voters. Most people watching the TV debates, out of that, are a lot of them gonna fact check that? No, they'll take it on face value. Um, so this is a little video clip I'm saying that you can watch if you'd like to talking about WhatsApp and the spread of viral messages. In terms of the last um, campaign in 2019, there was accusations that the Liberal Democrat Party were actually putting out fake newspapers. What the Lib Dems had done is, with their manifesto, lots of you will know that during a, an election you get leaflets through the door, you get information, vote for me, vote for me, this is what I'll do, this is what I'll do, and so on. Um, and through this, the Lib Dems thought, ooh, let's make ours like, really attractive, and they laid it out like a newspaper. 
what some critics were saying though is if you lay out like a newspaper a lot of people think a newspaper is reliable compared to a leaflet that comes through your door that says "Ooh, i am an election leaflet so people were saying that was quite deceptive <clears throat> and another example here and um, this is keir starmer who is now leader of the labor party but he was not at this point and um, he was an mp but he was not the leader he gave an interview on good morning britain and he was asked about Brexit by Piers Morgan and I can't remember his answer but he gave a really good answer and Piers Morgan kind of thanked him you know he wasn't stuttering he wasn't stumbling around it however the Conservative Party actually took that video and doctored it so they jumbled up the basically his answers and the questions and they edited it so it looked like he was stuttering and stumbling and then they put it out saying Labour has no plan for Brexit so they edited and doctored the video now Piers Morgan called the Conservatives out on it because he said, look, I'm all for you criticising each other, but that's not fair because people will believe that's the answer he gave and it wasn't. Um, and thankfully they got Keir Starmer back on and asked him about that, but that's a spread of fake news. People would spread the, spread the Conservative video version and not the genuine one. We also know social media is getting more and more important. In 2019, Boris Johnson joined Snapchat. I still can't get in my head that the Prime Minister has a, a communications person employed for his Snapchat but that's another day story. Um, prior to the election day in 2019 Conservatives spent over £100,000 on Facebook adverts alone. That's not including Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, um, leaflets, posters, campaigns, that is £100,000 on Facebook adverts for the election and the Brexit party spent over £107,000 on Facebook adverts. There's a really good article here if you're interested. It's not too long. I've tried to keep these short, um, but it talks about using social media in a clever way. So, for example, when celebrities go on Instagram encouraging people to register to vote, they tend to see a spike in the amount of people signing up to vote, particularly in the younger age groups. When celebrities endorse a candidate, so there was a, uh, there was a campaign by the Labour Party a few years ago, some of you will have seen it. It had Martin Freeman um, from The Hobbit or Sherlock. He was Watson and Sherlock. Um, he was in it and there were loads of other celebrities kind of speaking for the Labour Party. That saw quite a surge because people went, oh, I know them, I like them, I watch them in that movie. Um, so they'll put them forward and that can have an impact as well. We also know that hashtags and the ability to contact MPs through line does make them more accountable to the public, develops connection. If you can tweet your MP and they reply to you, you feel like you matter. If you write a letter to your MP and you don't get a reply for a month, are you going to think the same thing? Um, we also find that online, if you see positive posts, you're more likely to engage and vote and share that. Positive or supportive posts are shared and go viral more easily than negative ones. Just some interesting things I've added on the slide here about social media. That graph you have in the top right corner, you'll be able to see it better when you've got the slides open on your own screen. It is talking about what was the most common topic to be discussed related to the general election. And it's basically saying, I think that's over 1,100,000 kind of tweets or Instagrams or tags related to Brexit, whereas immigration was really low. So people are engaging in the debates around an election. During the 2017, only 3% of all internet time was spent on news and that was worse for young people because they only spend eight minutes a week visiting news sites. Another thing we've got to think about with media though is yes, it can influence, yes, we've got social media, we've got all that positives. However, media can also not influence because people don't engage with it. Some examples of this are the lack of trust in media. Some of you guys will have heard about the phone hacking scandal. This is a good few years ago now. However, um, it effectively transpired that a very popular British newspaper, which is no longer running, it doesn't exist anymore, had been hacking into the phones of celebrities, of missing people, um, of people wanted for crimes and listening to voicemails to get in secret information. So they were hacking in. There was some really famous cases that actually they hacked into the phone of a missing teenager, um, Millie Dowler, you might have heard of this. Um, Millie Dowler was unfortunately actually uh, brutally murdered, but the newspaper at the time, not knowing this, they, did, they knew she was missing, but they didn't know what had happened to her, hacked into her phone 
listen to the worried voicemails from our parents and family and friends and everything. And because at that time your your voicemail could only hold a certain amount of messages, like it had a storage capacity, they deleted voicemails so that they could go back in in another week and see if there was any new ones. I'll let that sit with you for a minute. Um, there was a massive, massive investigation into it and fines and prison sentences and all this, but a lot of people now don't trust the media, particularly certain newspapers. In terms of trust in media, it came out after the Brexit referendum that this company called Cambridge Analytica had actually been passing private data on. Um, Cambridge Analytica had very carefully tailored Facebook adverts to certain people. However, when people clicked on these adverts, it would basically harvest their information, not like bank deals, but it would harvest stuff like they use Facebook and Twitter and their email is signed up to New Look and River Island. Okay, they're a young person, they're this, so that the political parties could then tailor their adverts even more. So it's a bit like saying if they knew on Facebook you had also liked a local business selling tie-dye t-shirts, they go, ooh, young people are into tie-dye, we need to get in on that. Hope that makes sense. So that was a massive scandal. And also talking about things like the campaign materials. How do you know what comes through your door leaflet wise is true? This was really interesting. Um, trust in the news. 51% of people feel they trust the news they use. However, only 40% of the British public feel that they trust the news in general. So what that means is the news I use is, for example, saying, well, I use this website and I trust it. So I use the BBC or Sky or I use the Daily Mail. Please don't use the Daily Mail as a source. It's terrible. But that person, 51% of people believe the sources they use. However, they've got less trust generally about the news. Well, actually, I don't like that website. I don't trust what it says. Search engines don't have a lot of trust. And funnily enough, social media only has 10% trust. So you could argue there only 10% of people trust social media. Therefore, it has no influence on voting behavior because they don't take it seriously. Does that make sense? So when we're analysing this, almost everyone in the UK sees political information in one way or another. Whether you want to or not, you literally open your phone, there's an advert. You go in the street, there's a billboard or a poster. It's on the news. And we should care about it, but we are being influenced. In the run-up to the election, media is dominated. It's everywhere. If you've not noticed it in previous years, pay attention in future years. You cannot escape an election. We know traditional media is still used by many. There are still about 10 million people reading newspapers on a regular basis, but we also know that number's dropped. Is that as influential? And we've also got social media, which is helping to provide that as well. So that is looking at voting behaviour behavior and media. What it's really important to do as you go through this process is try and think of your peel all the time. So your point example, uh, explain analysis or evaluation and link back to question. I've given you a couple of starter paragraphs here that you might use. That is everything you'll be glad to know. Hopefully you find the questions okay and look forward to the Google Meet and seeing you all very, very soon.